If you've purchased the new Isle of Armor DLC 1 in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, you'll be met with a very tough decision. Do you evolve your Cub Fu into the Single Strike Urshifu, or the Rapid Strike style Urshifu? Let's dive right into it, shall we? What's happening everyone? It's Abdali here, bringing you guys a tips and tricks tutorial video for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield Isle of Armor DLC. We've got a jam-packed episode that's going to teach you everything you need to know about Cub Fu and how exactly to evolve him in the two different ways. We're going to take it a step further and give you guys the main differences of why you choose one or the other, and by the end of this you guys will be most informed. Thanks so much for being here. If you guys didn't already subscribe, make sure you guys are on board with it. We did a full-on Let's Play of Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield when it first came out. And now, we are continuing on with the Isle of Armor DLC. We did a couple live streams. I would love it if you guys would check out those videos. And we got some tips and tricks going to be put in that playlist as well. So, let's get started with it. So, here we go. This is exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to show you guys exactly how to get the brand new evolutions of Cub Fu. And then we're going to go into competitive aspects and really jump into the details of things. So, again, thanks for being here. You guys can definitely take a look at the chapters that are on screen if you guys are watching on desktop. Or take a look at the description for timestamps below. Okay, so beginning right over here, you're going to see that we are in the Isle of Armor DLC. It's super cool because there's a brand new island over here. There's a lot of different flying areas and there's a little bit of a story mode that goes along with. You can beat the story mode easily within two to three hours, especially if you have a full team of 100 Pokemon. You can breeze it in half that time. But anyway, this is the Isle of Armor over here. In order to get started, for one, you have to purchase the Isle of Armor DLC from the Nintendo eShop, okay? This is not free. You're going to need to spend money in order to get it. Once you've purchased it, go over to your Pokemon Sword, click on the plus button, and then head on over to Software Update. You should be able to go and update your game via internet to version 1.2. Once you have that, you can jump in and you are all set and ready to go. All you have to do then is go over to Wedgehurst Station and you'll be able to find the beginning of the story that way. So I'm not going to go through the entire story, but long story short, if you guys notice, you'll be able to go through the three trials of the mustard guy right over here, the dojo mustard. You'll be able to do those three trials and then a little bit later, once you're done with those very easy fetch quests, you'll be awarded with Cub Fu. Now, Cub Fu is a very, very cute Pokemon. He's a fighting type, and he's just raring to go. So once you get Cub Fu and you get him to a best friend status by bringing him to one of the different areas that the game kind of tells you to, you'll be able to choose which way you want to evolve your specific Cub Fu. If you take a look at the map right over here, there's going to be two different spots. This one is the Tower of Darkness. Ooh, let's take a look at that. This is the Tower of Darkness over here. Now, once you go inside the Tower of Darkness, there's no turning back. So save beforehand and then kind of see what happens. Once you go in the Tower of Darkness, you'll be doing a 1v1 of your specific Cub Fu versus all of the in-game trainers, and they all have one Pokemon apiece. If you level up your Cub Fu with experience candies or rare candies or just battling with him, to level 70, it should be a very easy cakewalk for you. If you guys need any help with that stuff, by all means, watch my stream video on how exactly I did it. Once you make it to the top, you'll find an easy way of evolving him right then and there into the brand new fighting and dark type single strike style. That is going to be really awesome. Pause there for a second. Now let's take a look at the other side of things. Let's head on over to the map and I'll show you guys what happens when you go the opposite route. So right over here on Challenge Beach is where we're going to fly over to. And this is exactly the brand new Tower of Waters. Now, it's going to be the exact same thing. A little bit different flavor text, but it's going to be where you bring your Cub Fu all the way through over there, and you end up fighting 1v1 all the way to the top. Once you click on that banner, you'll be able to evolve your Cub Fu into the Rapid Strike style, which is a fighting and water typing. A very rare typing, and it's, it's pretty great, actually. So quick note before we jump into the finer specifics of moves and movesets is that you're going to be able to Gigantamax this Pokemon. So keep on playing through the story of Isle of Armor and you'll be able to find that we got to feed him some special soup and you're going to need to find special ingredients for it. Once you feed him that soup, you are ready to go. Click that Dynamax button and watch him do all these awesome attacks. So now that we showed you guys exactly how to evolve every single one of these different 
evolutions here, let's actually go into competitive battling. So taking a look at Urshifu's base stats, his HP is at 100 base points, his attack is at a whopping 130, that hits like a truck, defensive base points are going to be around 100, special attack is going to be 63, special defense 60, speed at 97. So you're going to notice that, yes, he's going to be more geared towards being a physical attacker. Can you run a special attack set? Sure, but is it the most optimal? Probably not. And you'll also notice that with a 97 speed, he's not going to be outspeeding a lot of the base 100 Pokemon that are in the cast. So keep that in mind as you guys build your specific Urshifu. Now before we go into the specifics of each of these Pokemon, I want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of some notable shared moves that any of these styles can learn via TM or TR within the game depending on if you have them. Now again, this is notable moves. This is not every single move available. These are the ones that I feel are gonna be really good. So starting from the top, we have all the elemental punches, which is fire punch, ice punch, and thunder punch. If you equip your entire Urshifu with that, you have a lot of great type coverage, especially if you do the bolt beam combo, which is the ice punch and thunder punch, and leave the other two slots for whatever you want. I love those punches. Next up in line is going to be U-Turn. U-Turn is great for momentum and pivoting to make sure that you always have the upper edge when it comes to things. If you're in a battle and it's not looking good, use U-Turn to hit them and then switch into someone else in order to take the hit. Next up is going to be Drain Punch. I love Drain Punch. It is super strong. It helps you absorb some of those hits. Very, very great. Another one that I personally love is Acrobatics. If you're fighting another Urshifu, Acrobatics paired with a Flight Gem item is going to be amazing. So try that out for size. Next notable move is going to be False Swipe. Not really something for competitive, but since there's a lot of brand new Pokemon in the Pokemon uh, Isle of Armor DLC, using False Swipe on this guy is only inevitable to help you get these Pokemon caught a lot easier. If you're into playing doubles, he's able to learn Rock Slide, so that's also a really good one, especially because he's fast, he can potentially get some flinches for you. Poison Jab is one of my favorite moves to slap on him because it's anti-fairy, and especially if you're rocking the single strike variant of Urshifu, you definitely want to watch out for those fairy types, so Poison Jab is very good for that. And if you're going for another anti-fighting move, kind of like acrobatics, Zen Headbutt is your choice, with the off chance of flinching if you're able to outspeed. So now that we covered all the notable moves that both of these different styles take, let's talk about all of the exclusive moves that are available for each of these different ones, and that way you can make a better decision of how you want to piece this Pokemon into your ultimate team. Now, right over here, we have the single strike style, which is going to be fighting and dark. He is very powerful, and as you can see over here, he's got a lot of exclusive moves in the form of Wicked Blow. Let's take a look at that. So if we go over to Wicked Blow, this is an amazing move, simply because it is so powerful. It is going to be the 80 base power, and it will 100% always crit. Now, how crazy is that if you think about it, right? So since he's fighting in dark, it's an 80 base power. You're going to be adding 40 more base power to that for same type attack bonus. And then you're going to be multiplying that times 1.5, which is the crit rate, for a whopping total of 180 base power attack. And you can do it five times, or if you have a PP max, you could do it eight times. And imagine that, coupling that with a choice band? Oh my gosh, that is power through the roof. I don't know who's going to be able to survive that unless it's like a resisted hit. So anyway, that's whopping and that's amazing. So if you go over to the move rememberer for free, you don't have to pay any heart scales in this game. If you go to the move rememberer, you can absolutely learn sucker punch as well. And I highly suggest this one in case there is a base 100 or higher Pokemon that is going to be potentially outspeeding you and you know they're going to do an attack stab sucker punch same type attack bonus adding an additional 35 to 70 over here which is a whopping 105 oh my gosh and plus two priority that beats up any kind of attack it's amazing it's absolutely amazing so other than that urshifu has a whole bunch of different um exclusives from tms and trs and we're going to go over some of the notable ones right over here so we're going to talk about uh beat up you can have beat up payback assurance Fling is going to be interesting, maybe if you want to fling like a flame orb or something like that. Snarl, in case you want to use that for doubles. Crunch is pretty powerful. Uh, Dark Pulse, Foul Play, 
Darkest Lariat, and Throat Chop. Now, honestly, those are some exclusive different moves that you can use for him, but are you honestly going to replace Wicked Blow with any of those? Most likely not, unless you're looking for some sort of crazy set that's kind of off the cuff. Anyway, so that's him. I think it's amazing. 180 base power Wicked Blow is so strong. All right, uh, our next Pokemon is going to be the alternate variant, which is going to be the multi-strike style. So let's talk about this guy. Now, we're going to see over here that he's got the move called Surging Strikes. Surging Strikes is going to be very similar to the alternate version. Um, now this guy, remember, he's going to be a fighting type and he's going to be a water type. So he gets same type attack bonus with all of those specific moves. But the thing about Surging Strikes is that it is a 25 base power attack, but it happens three times. So the main difference is it sacrifices a little bit of power, but it deals three different hits. And the reason why that's good is because of substitute. In singles and sometimes in doubles, we'll see people run substitute and then pretty much set up and buff themselves behind a substitute while proceeding to sweep your team. The beauty about Surging Strikes is kind of a lot like Water Shuriken, if you think about it, uh, with Greninja back in the day. So you're able to hit three times and every single one of those is a critical hit. So let's do the math really quick. That math is going to be 25 times three, which equals a base power of 75, adding half of that for same type attack bonus, which is 37.5, equals to 168.75, or just rounding it up to 169 base power. So it's about 11 base power less than the alternate, uh, which is going to be the Wicked Blow, but at the at the benefit of possibly breaking some substitutes. It really depends on you if you think about it. So anyway, other than that, we do have a couple exclusive TMs and TRs that you may want to think about. I don't know. Check them out. Right over here, we're going to show you guys that you can learn Waterfall in case you're very fast and you're looking for those flinches. Waterfall is right at you. Liquidation, very powerful. If you want to run a water team, you can learn Rain Dance. Whirlpool, maybe Dive, which definitely helps out with dodging uh, Dynamax and Gigantamax attacks. You got Brine, and then if you want to fish for a Scald Burn, really go for it. If you really want to look at it, you're not going to be using any of the special moves all that often. It's really all about surging, uh, surging strikes. Now, outside of that, you go over to the move rememberer, and you've got Aqua Jet over here. Now, Aqua Jet isn't as good, arguably, as the Sucker Punch, but it is 100% hitting all the time, regardless of if someone uses a status move. So keep that in mind. Aqua Jet, which is going to be 60 base power, not bad, and it's priority plus one, so I'm totally down for it. And one of the last things that you want to consider outside of movesets is going to be weaknesses and strengths. Now, when you take a look at the Urshifu that is of the fighting dark variety, you're going to notice that it is four times weak against fairy. Yes, absolutely. If you see a dazzling gleam coming your way, there's no way you're surviving it outside of a focus sash. So he will be taking a lot of damage from that, but that doesn't necessarily make him a bad Pokemon, especially if you can see the specific fairy type move coming your way, and you have a Pokemon in your back pocket that can come in and help cover that weakness. Now you'll also notice that he takes only two times weaknesses from both flying and fighting. So that's really not that bad. And of course, resistances, he's got half, half damage, from rock types and ghost types, takes a quarter damage, which is really, really good switch in, uh, from dark, and it takes zero damage from psychic. So there's an immunity in there. So if you see a psychic type move coming, you could easily switch in this Urshifu and get a free switch to completely plow out the competition. Next up, if you take a look at the fighting and water weaknesses over here for this type calculator, you'll also notice that there's no four times weaknesses and there's also no immunities with this. You'll notice that you take two times damage from flying, grass, electric, psychic, and fairy. So that's a lot more than the previous variant. And you get a lot more resistances too, which is half damage from rock, bug, steel, fire, water, ice, and dark. So there we have it. All the information that you need to know in order to make your decision on whether or not to evolve Cub Fu towards the single strike style right over here with fighting and dark or the rapid strike style with fighting and water. Let me know what kind of move sets and EV effort value sets that you guys are using on your entire Pokemon. Also, what kind of items you guys running outside of like choice band or expert belt 
or maybe even assault vests to mitigate some of these special attacks. I would love to hear all that stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. Let me know in the comments which ones you guys chose, and I can't wait to read all those. If you guys want even more Pokemon content from yours truly, by all means, smash that like button and share the video with a friend. We got tons more happening for the Isle of Armor DLC, and we're gonna be doing the Crown Tundra too once that releases later on in the year. I'd love to have you guys on board. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.